Hello everyone. This guide will explain the typical Party Finder Pug strats for the Seat of Sacrifice Extreme, the Warrior of Light. I've killed this boss over a hundred times due to ultimately buying the mount. I've made this guide to help those learning the fight and show them what to expect if they plan to farm the weapons or mount after they clear. These strategies are what 99.9% .9 of the parties I joined expected you to know and execute. There are multiple ways these mechanics can be handled, but for those looking to join the party finder or pug groups, these are the strategies. The beginning of the fight, a 1 will be placed on the ground. This is to determine your position as well as your partner for each mechanic. The sides of the square represent the cardinal positions, north, south, east, and west, while the corners represent the intercardinal, northwest, northeast, southeast, and southwest. Tanks and healers take the cardinal position, tanks, north and south, healers, east and west. The DPS take the intercardinal position. Typically, ranged and caster will take northeast and northwest, and the melee take southeast and southwest. To determine your partners for everything, the tanks and healers rotate clockwise. What this means is the north tank and northeast DPS are paired, the east healer and southeast DPS are paired, the south tank and southwest DPS are paired, and finally the west healer and northwest DPS are paired. Once everyone has settled on their position and partner, a 2 is placed to split the party into two light parties, one tank, one healer, and two DPS. Typically the north tank, west healer, and west DPS are 1, the south tank, east healer, and east DPS are 2. Now that that's settled, markers will be placed to easily identify where you are supposed to be during each mechanic. The markers I use look like this. The numbers 1 through 4 are the cardinal, north, south, etc. The letters A through D are the intercardinals, northeast, southwest, etc. If you notice, the cardinal and intercardinal share the same color marker for each pair. I call this the color-coded markers. Not everyone uses these. Now that we have positions and markers, let's pull. The start of the fight, everyone except the main tank stacks south behind the boss. The boss will cast Terror Unleash, bringing everyone to one hit point and applying the party with True Walking Dead debuff. The healers need to heal everyone to full to dispel the debuff. Anyone not full when the debuff expires will die. Right after, he will cast To the Limit, which will give the boss a limit break gauge over his head, indicating an upcoming attack. This first gauge will always be Limit Break 3, the Meteor Limit Break. A quick note, his Limit Break gauge just indicates what he will use. When he casts Limit Break is when it is used. Also, if you try to use the party's Limit Break when the boss has Limit Break, he will use Hollowed Ground and become invulnerable. Next, the boss will cast Solemn Confidier, which places an AoE under each party member. This is why we are stacked south on his butt, to bait all the Confidiers in one spot. As these AoEs are exploding, the boss will start casting Absolute Stone 3, which marks each party member with a cone AoE. Every party member needs to be in their cardinal and intercardinal positions when the cast ends so they don't clip other party members with their cone. The typical party finder pug strat to handle the Solemn Confidiers and the Absolute Stone 3 is when you dodge the Confidier AoEs, simply move into your cardinal position around the boss's hitbox. After Stone 3 goes off, the boss starts casting Limit Break. This will use whatever limit break he has stored. This cast is LB3, Meteor. Meteor will target either all four DPS or each tank and healer. Meteor will also apply a fire resist down debuff causing the damage from two meteors to potentially be lethal. The typical party finder strat is each pair go to their assigned corner together to take a single meteor. Next, the boss will jump to the center and cast Imbued Saber, which will indicate what attacks are coming up. There are four imbuements total, Earth and Holy, and Fire and Ice. This first imbuement will always be Earth. This is followed by another imbued saber, which will either be Fire or Ice. In this example, it's Ice. Next, he will cast Imbued Coruscants, which is either a point blank AoE, get out, or a donut AoE, get in. The boss's sword has an animation that will tell you which is happening. Swirls around the sword is the donut AoE, get in his hitbox, or no swirls, which means to get out of melee range. This will also cast the two elements he just imbued his saber with, earth and ice or fire. Earth is absolute stone, so you will need to be in your cardinal positions. Ice is absolute blizzard 3, so you'll need to be moving or jumping when the cast ends to prevent being frozen in place and taking a few ticks of ice damage. Fire is Absolute Fire 3, applying a debuff that deals heavy damage when you move or take action. 
This includes auto attacks, so stop all movement and action for a few seconds. The typical party finder pug strat for this is, since we already know it's going to be earth first, everyone just goes to their cardinal and intercardinal positions for absolute stone 3. Once we see the second imbuement, we know it's either move or stop, and finally we wait for the sword animation to know if we need to step into his hitbox or move out of melee range. This run, it's earth, ice, and no swirls, so cardinals, move around, and move away from the boss. Next, the boss will cast another to the limit, giving him a charged LB bar again. This second LB will always be LB2, Desperado. Next, he will cast Sword of Light, calling three swords to spawn to the edge of the arena. These swords will draw lines through and around the arena. Anyone caught inside the connected lines will die. There will be a single side of the arena that is safe. To identify the safe side, look for the wall that has not been drawn down and go there. While finding the safe side, the boss will cast Absolute Holy, which is a split damage AoE on a single player. It will be placed on a random party member, so once you get to the safe side, stack with them. If everyone isn't in the stack, it's not lethal. The typical party finder strat for this is what I just explained. Find and go to the safe side and stack if you can. Immediately after the lines explode, the boss starts casting Limit Break. The LB2 Desperado will target each healer with a split damage line AoE. This is where our light parties from the beginning are used. The typical party finder strat for this is party 1 stacks on the west side of the boss and party 2 stacks on the east side. Most party finder markers on the arena will actually have a 1 and a 2 placed here to quickly identify where the stack spots are. Next, the boss will cast to the limit a third time to charge an LB1, Braver. Again, this third charge will always be LB1. Following this, the boss casts Imbued Saber twice again, followed by the Imbued Coruscants. This time, the two imbuements are the opposite of the first two. Because the first imbuement is always Earth, we know this second, first imbuement is always Holy. We also know that we had Ice first, so this second cast will be Fire. Same goes for the Imbued Coruscants. It too will be the opposite. We had no Swirls or Out, so this time will be Swirls or In. Holy is a split damage AoE on a random party member, not marked, so we need to stack to split that damage. The typical party finder strat for this is during the second cast of Imbued Saber, everyone stacks on the boss's bum in preparation for Absolute Holy. During the Imbued Coruscant's cast, everyone either ensures they are in the hitbox if there are Swirls or out of melee range if no Swirls, still stacked up for Holy and either stops all action for fire or moves in a tight space for ice. This example is holy, fire, and swirls, or stack, no action, and in. After imbued Coruscants, the boss will cast Limit Break using his LB1, Braver. Braver targets one tank, one healer, and one DPS with a wide cone AoE. The typical party finder strat for this is to have all DPS stack south on the boss's bump, each healer to stand on their cardinal position, and both tanks to stack north. This ensures no overlap and only one healer being hit. After LB1, the boss uses the Bitter End, a hard hitting tank buster that targets the main tank and applies a huge physical vulnerability up debuff, requiring a tank swap. There isn't really a party finder strat for this, other than cooldown and Vogue slash shirk during the cast, not after. The swap itself, however, has two variants. In the majority of the party finder farm parties I was in, the tanks swap positions and partners. After the swap, the south tank becomes the north tank pairing with the northeast DPS from here until the next tank swap, and vice versa, the north tank is now the south tank pairing with the southwest DPS. Either way, you still rotate the same direction clockwise. In very few parties though, I had tanks ask to keep their position and partner. The boss was still faced north, it's just the tanks had to run a little further for that Meteor LB and swap positions for Stone 3. But it's up to the tanks. After the tank swap, the boss uses Summon Wyrm. A Bahamut will spawn in the north end of the arena on either the east or west side and fly through that half of the arena. At the same time, everyone will be targeted for Solemn Confidier, the ground AoEs. Also, a random party member will be targeted for Absolute Flash, a gaze attack originating from the targeted player that everyone needs to look away from to prevent getting a massive stack of damage down. The damage down reduces the damage you deal for a while. The typical party finder strat for this is when the boss starts casting Summon Wyrm, everyone stacks on his bum to bait the Confidiers. Once the Confidiers come out, everyone moves to the opposite side of the Bahamut, 
and the player with the gaze marker just runs out a little further than the rest of the party so everyone can resume DPS on the boss and automatically dodge the gaze. As the Bahamut flies through, the boss casts Eld Dragon Dive, a room-wide AoE that marks the end of phase one, the ad phase. The boss will jump north and use Specter of Light, which will call forth adds that bring with them a few mechanics to deal with, as well as two adds to kill. In this phase, each light party will go to their side of the arena, one west, two east, to deal with each mechanic. The mechanics are the same for each side. The typical party finder strat for these mechanics are as follows. Each tank will pick up their ad and move them slightly east and west respectively. If the adds are too close, they tether and buff each other. Each ad has a tank buster that they use periodically that needs mitigation, so use your cooldowns. Shortly after the ad is picked up, each DPS will be marked with a proximity marker, Deluge of Death, and will take that marker to their assigned corners. Right after the DPS get their markers, each healer will be marked with a split damage marker and will stand between the tank and the wall, ensuring to keep the tank inside the split marker. Right before the DPS and healer markers explode, two towers will spawn in the center, requiring two players to stand in each tower or they will explode for room-wide damage and debuffs. Once the DPS markers explode, the DPS will run to their side's tower to soak the damage. At the same time, four Bahamuts will spawn in each corner and tether a random player for a cone AoE that does reach the entire arena. Once the healer's split damage marker explodes, the tank and healer will pick up the Bahamut tethers and face them out to each corner. The tank will take the North Bahamut and the healer will get the South Bahamut. During this time, each ad will start casting a buff on themselves that need to be silenced. It's very important. It can't be stunned and must be silenced. Once the Bahamut tethers go off, it's just a DPS check. Kill each ad before the boss's limit break gauge reaches 100 or that's a wipe. A lot happens in a short amount of time, so let's go over that one more time. Two ads will spawn in the center. Each tank will pick up their ad and move it slightly out. Each DPS will be targeted with a proximity marker and take it to their corner. Each healer will be targeted with a split damage marker and share it with the tank. After the proximity markers go off, the DPS will run to their tower to soak the damage. The tanks will silence their ad, and each tank and healer will pick up the Bahamut tethers and face it into the corner. A quick note, you can have a ranged or caster DPS target both adds for an LB. However, you do need to tank LB3 for the next mechanic. If neither ad is dead, this is safe, as each ad gives the party 1.5 limit break bars when they die. However, if one ad is already dead, you will not receive enough limit break to use the tank LB3. After the ads are dead, everyone stacks in the center for shields and heals, the boss will charge up an LB4, and use ultimate crossover. Tank LB3 is required here, or you'll wipe. Be sure to also use some party-wide mitigation, because this is heavy. Phase 2 is a series of 4 mechanic patterns that can happen in any order and you may or may not kill the boss before seeing all 4, so I'll show you each one and each typical party finder strat. First up we have what is commonly known as the Dark Knight pattern. The boss will jump to the center and cast to the limit, charging up a random LB. Next he will use Spectre of Light to summon a Dark Knight and Bard Spectre. Right after, the boss casts Solemn Confidier, marking each player with a ground AoE. As the Confidiers come out, the Dark Knight targets each DPS with Brimstone Earth, a puddle AoE that grows wider over time. As the puddles get placed and expand, the Bard Spectre appears and marks one tank, one healer, and one DPS with Deluge of Death proximity markers. As each player is marked, the boss casts Absolute Holy, a split damage marker on a random player not marked by the bard. After the puddles dissolve, the Deluge of Death explode, and the Holy explodes, the boss will jump to the center and cast Limit Break, using his LB he charged up at the start of all this. Handle this as before. Shortly after, the boss will use the Bitter End Tank Buster, forcing a tank swap and ending the pattern. The typical party finder strat for these mechanics are the Confidiers or YOLO'd, each DPS drops their puddle in their assigned intercardinal corner. Each proximity marked player will run to the edge of the arena in between the expanding puddles. The tank will go north, the DPS will go south, and the healer will go east or west. And everyone else stacks in the center for holy. Then handle the LB, whatever it is, like you did in phase 1. Then the tank swap during the bitter end. Next we have what is commonly known as the summoner pattern. The boss will jump north and cast Imbued Saber, which will either be fire or ice. 
Then, he will use Spectre of Light to call forth a Summoner and a Warrior Spectre. The Summoner Spectre will spawn first and summon four Bahamuts in each corner of the room. The Warrior will spawn next and target either the DPS or the Tanks and Healers with Perfect Decimate, a cone AoE originating from the Warrior. At the same time the Warrior Markers come out, each Bahamut will tether a random player for a cone AoE. As these are happening, the boss is casting Solemn Confidier under each player. These mechanics repeat but on the opposite players. The player not targeted with the Warrior Marker will be targeted the second time, and another round of Confidiers will be cast. After the second set of cones go out, the boss will use Summon Weir. A Bahamut spawns at the north on either the east or west to fly through that side of the arena. The boss jumps to the center to use Imbued Coruscants. This will either be in or out, look for the swirls, and the element he imbued at the beginning of this, either fire or ice. The boss will use Eld Dragon Dive, room-wide damage, followed by the Bitter End Tank Buster and Swap. The typical Party Finder strat is once the Warrior Markers and Tethers come out, each pair will identify if they or their partner was marked by the Warrior. The player not marked by the Warrior picks up their pair's Bahamut Tether and aims the Tether into their intercardinal corner. The player marked by the Warrior aims their AoE out in their pair's cardinal position. After the AoEs go out, the markers will swap and the opposite player will now have the Warrior Marker. The non-marked player will take the tether from their partner to swap positions. The Confidiers are YOLO'd, just drop them so you have room to move to the edge to aim your cone out. After the second set of cones, the boss uses Summon Wyrm. The party moves to the opposite side of the Bahamut. Watch for imbued Coruscants, once you identify either Swirls or no Swirls, move in or out respectively, and handle the fire or ice imbuement. Then the boss uses Eld Dragon Dive, followed by the Bitter End Tank Buster Swap ending the pattern. Next, the easiest, the Ninja Pattern. The boss will jump to the center and use Imbued Saber. The imbuement will either be Earth or Holy. Then, the boss will use Spectre of Light to call forth a Ninja Spectre. The Ninja Spectre will use Suitan San to summon a huge water column on either the east or west side of the arena. This water column will knock players away from the side it's on when it explodes. Immediately after, the boss will use Solemn Confidier, targeting each player. The Ninja also targets all four DPS with Katan San, split damage markers. After the knockback and split damage go off, the boss casts Imbued Coruscants. Look for the swirls and handle the element he imbued earlier, Earth or Holy. Then the boss uses Eld Dragon Dive. Then a Bitter End Tank Buster Swap. The typical Party Finder strat is after the Imbued Saber and Spectre Ninja appear, everyone generally stacks on the boss's bum to bait the incoming Confidiers. Dodge the Confidiers and move to your pair's intercardinal around the boss's hitbox. Use your knockback immunity right as the Confidiers explode, then split the damage of Katan San. Everyone gets in position for the Coruscants and Element. In or out, and Cardinals are stack. Then Eld Dragon Dive. Handle the Tank Buster Swap, and you're done! The fourth and last pattern, my favorite, the Mage Pattern. The boss will jump to the center and use Spectre of Light to call forth a Black Mage and a White Mage. Then, the boss will use To the Limit, charging up an LB. The two Mage Spectres will use Twin Cast. This will summon eight towers that spawn around the center one at a time, starting with the Cardinal Positions, and then the Intercardinal Positions. Each tower needs two players to soak the damage or they will explode for room-wide damage and debuffs. As the last two towers are exploding, the boss will use Summon Wyrm and call forth that Bahamut to the north, either east or west. Then the boss will use Imbued Coruscants, this time with no element, so it's just in or out. The boss will use Limit Break and use his charged LB. Then the boss will use the Bitter End, the Tank Buster Swap.
The typical party finder strat for this is each pair will handle their tower that spawns at their cardinal position, north, east, etc. Whatever number your tower is, be it 1, 2, 3, or 4, you and your partner will handle the same number tower on the intercardinals. So if you and your partner are the second tower, you will run to the second intercardinal tower to soak. Same goes for the other number towers. If you're four, then you'll go to the fourth intercardinal. You get the idea. Once all four towers explode, look for the Bahamut and go to the opposite side. Then look for the swirls of the sword to be in or out. There is no element this time. Then handle the limit break like you did in phase one. Tank swap for the bitter end, and that's it. That's all four specter patterns. These patterns can happen in any order, so react accordingly. There are a few things to tell you, however. After the first pattern, the boss jumps to the center and casts Quintuple Cast, which fires all five of his elemental attacks back to back. During the cast, he will show you the order of the attacks over every player's head. With the exception of the split damage and the eye markers, they are on the player targeted with them. They are Earth, Fire, Ice, Holy, and the Gaze attack. The elements have, I think, two or three patterns. In the Party Finder parties, everyone moves to their assigned Cardinal and Intercardinal positions and just treats it like a Simon Says game. After the Simon Says, he will use a slightly faster Sword of Light, followed by an Eld Dragon Dive. If your party sees all four Spectre patterns, the boss will enrage, calling every Spectre and charging another LB4 to wipe the party. I've never seen this, as by now item levels are way over the requirement. That's everything you need to know for the typical party finder farm strategies. I hope this helps, and I hope you all get the mount on your clear, or at least lot a 99 before your 99th clear. If you liked this video, like it in real life with the like button, subscribe for more of these guides, and share this with your friends. My name is Creeley. Have a safe journey. Immediately after the lines explode, the boss starts casting Limit Break. The LB2 Desperado will target each healer with a split line with this with bleh bleh bleh. <laughs> Immediately after the lines explode, the boss starts casting Limit Break. The LB2 Desperado will target each healer with a split dam with it bleh bleh bleh. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> Immediately after the lines explode, the boss starts casting Limit Break. The LB2 Desperado will target each healer with a split damage line AoE. This is where our light parties from the beginning are used. The typical party finder strat for this is party... I'm going to start that all over. <laughs>